start immediately accusing me of uh, not being prepared. He's late. Here we go again. Oh, it's all right. Shit happens, and yeah. uh, people talk their shit. It's what. Hey. That's why we love our league. Yeah, hey, that's why uh, I create. That's why I created all this four years ago was for the shit talk. The shit talk, the uncut page, everything about that spring. 2017 got us to where we are today crazy to think how time flies mr keith giles time flies and it never stops it never stops especially when you have children makes it go even faster not yet at least oh one day though one day having a seven-year-old just absolutely blows my mind and the fact that i now have lost like seven inches on my hairline is uh doesn't make it any better yeah that's it's like that shit's ooh. like look at that shit man i think it's time to get <laughs> i think it's time to buzz it brother no 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 oh no, no. yeah I think see gonna i'm gonna get my back surgery done okay and i gotta get some dental work i, I need that too Hold and on. then uh we we gonna i'm gonna I'm pull the lebron magic and get this hairline fixed that's probably okay. the, that's probably my favorite thing about LeBron is he was able to fix his hairline. You, you know, I applaud any man who is able to make that thing work because honestly, I have already said if I start losing my hairline, I'm just going to straight up shave the rest of my head and roll with it from there because some things just aren't worth desperately hanging on to and order to make something happen like a feeling or a sensation like you had a long time ago you know you just gotta let it go man let it go look i've done the imagine gotta let it go not many of these guys can let a lot of things go it seems like that's the thing i I, i've done the imaginary bald thing and it don't look good you know it don't look good either so you know what you know what else don't look good (laughs) what else doesn't look good mr blaze A lot of prospects of a lot of teams right now but i don't know man i don't know this was an interesting week i'll be honest um i was there all day i screwed up the killer bees outlaws game i'll admit it i was also terrible with the demons versus uh west virginia venom team um i missed two shots i was gonna make a diss video for the demons but i can't talk shit because i'm trash too it's okay demons we can be trash together if you guys want to be on the same team again i'm down free agent (laughs) lacing them up again blaze lace them up again hey i do anything um i take i could do gm stuff i could do office work you trying to travel on the circuit let me know you looking you know, for a, you looking for a quarterback? Let me know. Hey, no slight to Kevin Clancy, but Kevin Clancy can't be there every week. You know, you just got to hit me up. I'm Joe. I'll be there on the field. Let me know. Jamie Lagana has entered the waiting room. Uh oh, here is Mr. Lagana. And Mr. He's Clancy has just started watching. Speaking of the devil, who has started watching? Mr. Clancy. He just started devil. watching. You. He must have felt the felt the force. It's the spirit of the warrior chiming in. That's what we do here. I'm, oh, by the way, uh, he's Keith Giles. I'm Joey Blaze. This is the Extra Yard with Keith Giles and Joey Blaze. I'm live tonight. Hey, look, there's Jamie Lagana's name. Let's get a speaker view. There we go. I forgot we were on that view. Live tonight from my office here in Boomer. Y'all know where Boomer is. Swing on by. Catch me around town. Um, Ross Collins is out tonight. He's busy working. Um, so we're live here at the office and over at his office is Mr. Keith Giles. Keith, welcome to your own show. No, thank you for my, uh, introduction for my own show. I appreciate it. It's not really my own show. It is, it is, it is our show, you know, uh, it, the camaraderie between the two of us makes the show and the people that come on make the show. So it's all of our shows. We're a great conglomerate. What can I say? It works. It works great. What can I say? Yep. 
And, you know, I truly appreciate everything that's going down. It's been a great season so far. I'm looking forward more to it. It was. Uh, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. I think the league has started a little slow this year. A little slow this year, you think? Uh, I'm being optimistic. A uh, little slow. I'm. It need, it's going to pick up here a bit. You know, obviously, Tate Misfits out of the slow part. But. Uh, yeah, you can't call them slow. Bro. Yeah, no, I wasn't doing that by any means. Uh, but no, a lot of teams are starting out pretty slow here. And, you know, I think we'll see some better games here as the season goes on. I 100% agree. Um, is Jamie in the, is Jamie still on the call? He's, he's there. It's Mike or it's me. Oh, he just unmuted. There he is. There he is. He's like, he's like, oh shit. They said my name. He had to step out from the curtain. I was just letting oh, you okay. do your thing. I'm just waiting. Oh, uh, okay. No, I was letting that. You can chime anytime you wanted, Jamie. We're just chilling right now. Way back Wednesday night, man. It's raining out. You know, I love a rainy night. Um, it's uh, been a relaxing, cool day. It's the first day of fall. Y'all know that, right? Yes. Happy fall, everybody. We are at the first day of fall 2021. And let me tell you, it's going to be in the air. I've been feeling a little bit. Last week was hot, though. I, I don't know if you were there long enough, Jamie, before it got hot out, but it was insanely hot by, like, 1 or 2 o'clock. It was hot like, enough when I left. I was sure. done. Bro, I was fried. I was fried in more ways than one, trust me. It was hurting that <sighs> day. Tough, tough day. That heat was on. And I would rather just not. I'm glad it's going to be cool. I think it's going to be about 73 on Saturday. So we're going to have some favorable weather, which I think is very healthy and beneficial, you know, to the league. You know, we're going to get that fall feeling. Um, it's going to be a little cooler out. I'm really looking forward to what's going down. But let's talk about your week one, Jamie. Uh, Wolverines made their nine-man debut. Uh, there have been a lot of talks on different pages on cut YFFL. Um, there was some back and forth in the spring, some back and forth actually this past week with you and Damian Kaysan. We'll see if Dam Damon, the Wolverines face off this year. Haven't seen him yet. Last time we saw him, he was on the Spartans, but I haven't seen him hyping up the demons. So we'll I see who that is. Dam Dame. I'm too new to nine man. I have no idea who that is. You don't know who that is? Well, he no don't clue. know who you are either. That's the best part. Here we are meeting in Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. Right. Yo, if Dan Dame is on and he's watching, the Zoom link is in the comments. Feel free to click. Feel free to chat. Um, Jamie, it was good to see what you guys had out there over the weekend. I really like the team you put together. Nice little mix there. Um, you got a mix of Elite Rebels, Baez Auto. And that's the early gist of some of your Wolverine guys coming over as well. But that seems to be just the beginning. Um, how much more is left? Do you got that full roster filled out? Are we going to see it throughout the season? I'll is tell it- you that we had 14 guys there Sunday, uh, Saturday, and I have 34 on the roster. You got 34 on the roster? I have 34 available guys that are willing and ready to play. And I will tell you that. None of them are slouches compared to what I already had there Saturday, except okay. for maybe except for maybe Marshall. <laughs> All I'm right, just playing. I love Marshall. He's a good dude. I like I liked how the team looked. Um, let's go over the first game with X Dogs. Um, you guys won that game, twenty six twenty one. Give me your impressions coming out of that matchup. Uh, from my point of view, of course, with it being my first nine man experience as far as my own team, I I would have nervous. I'm not gonna lie, you know. I talked a lot of a lot of stuff with Jut and uh, a couple of the other guys that I do know off of uh, X Dogs, and I've been talking. I've been chirping for a couple of two years, probably, with them guys saying I was gonna come up there and I was gonna beat them, and well, I did. So that was my goal there, the first game, you know. We had a lot of jitters. We never practiced together as a squad. We never didn't do anything together. So I wasn't even sure, honestly, who all was going to show up for sure. Um, had two or three heads that were supposed to be there that didn't come. Um, that would have shut down a lot of stuff. So I'm hoping that they show up. But, uh, you know, just growing pains. That, that's first game together. I thought it was a pretty good showing with it being the first game. You, anytime you beat a team like X-Dogs, regardless of who they have there, 
And from what I could see, they had most of their team there. So it's not like, you know, so-and-so wasn't there or whatever. Um, I thought we did all right, especially with not, without even not having our starting new line. I agree. Like, that's, you know, when, it, when you get a game like that, it's a bit of a wild card matchup for both teams. In a way, I get flashbacks to last year when uh, we at TBT went against the Reckless Villains which I'm sure you remember that game, Keith Giles. The speculation coming in was what kind of team did TJ Williams have coming into KFFL? Nobody knew for sure. There was some rumors, there was speculation. And that day, the villains came in and gave TBT their very first loss on that field and beat us 19 to nothing. Who could forget? And, you know... Not the same kind of game with X Dogs because you know X Dogs are going to bring it every time. They love these new teams coming in, giving them competition. You know, we talked about it. They've been the kings of nine man in this region for many years. Before Baez Auto, there was the X Dogs, the only team from this region with a nine man championship on the circuit. Three, in fact. And the, big, the biggest stat with X Dogs, and this is so true coming into this season. They have never missed the semifinals of their league. So I think you guys coming into the league, getting a new feel, I feel like it was one of those games where it's a wild card. You don't know what you got. They don't know what you got. You just go out there and play. And the fact that you went out there and won that game and banded together shows that this team has a lot of long-term potential. And I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of these pieces. That being said, to me, I think this will be a different game come fe- come November if you all do meet in playoffs. Matt Eisenberg, we talked about it. Isaiah started that game. Isaiah is not Matt. When Matt's back there, it's a lot different. And I feel like Matt come playoff time, he's going to come out there with a whole other approach. And I know you guys will be different too. He's going to have to get the intrigue of it. This is a long season. We're not getting full glimpses right now of a lot of teams. We're getting looks. And I feel like these different looks we're getting every week is going to be very key come playoff time to seeing who's got who out of all the people. Like I said, free agency is big right now. There is no other Saturday league. Anybody can come all over. You just need to play two games to get in. That's it. If you're available Saturdays, you want that work in? Come get it in the Keystone Flag Football League. We get it every single week. And I like what this Wolverines team has, and I really, really like how you guys came out. No fear against the Misfits in the second game, albeit just a rough day for TJ Holston. But the Misfits, you know, there's a lot of history with TJ and Misfits. We talked about in the broadcast, TJ was the quarterback when Misfits won Keystone in the fall of 19. And I feel like you he, they measure, you guys measured up well against them. You all put up 12 against a team that had a lot of the big names. They were about two-thirds full. But I do feel like for both sides going forward, it's a positive game because you get a feel for each other. And I think with the way Wolverines look now and the potential of talent that could be there later, you guys are definitely a team to look out for in November. Appreciate that. We're just here to, to, to play and do the best we can do. It is what it is. Yeah. A lot of it, I feel like, is going to come down to how you guys make that adjustment into the nine-man postseason. Coming here to the four state is a little different at times because while you do get a, while you do get a chance to see teams at their best, you don't truly know what a team is until that November playoff date. Right. Because of the fact that the regular season is a chess game. For some teams, it's circuit practice, but for others, we're just playing chess until we get to the main point, especially a lot of teams who've been around the block for a long time in this game. Um, What were your impressions, though, uh, of the Misfits? (laughs) Jamie, you okay? Did you flatline? I'm just saying (laughs) this is Lucas. Oh, that's Lucas over there? Yeah, Lucas is a – is in the background there. Lucas, did you away. Him? What's up, man? What's up, Lucas? What's up? What's up? 
Nothing much. We had you 20 got- people on our team, 13 show. You barely beat the dogs and misfits at eight. Oh, Tyler talking bad shit through Damian Coates. Tyler Spencer, banned from Facebook, has possessed the spirit of Damian Coates and is posting on his account right now. He's <laughs> coming right now. <laughs> Tyler says to you, Jamie, you barely beat the dogs and the misfits had 18 tops. Nobody wants to hear about that bullshit about roster being short. I got two more days and we back to hurt y'all's feelings. Fuck your team, Tyler Spencer. Damn. Of course. Damn, Tyler, Tyler, Tyler. Tyler Spencer is the most hated man in the YAFFL for a reason. I don't get it. Well, I never I never met him either. Whatever. I don't care. He, you can say what he nah, wants. He talks the most shit, though. Yo, there's a, yo, the first episode of my show, I called him the biggest mouth in the area. I was right. It's true. Tyler will talk the most shit, but he's going to ball out every time. I'm just saying to you, I feel like it's going to be interesting. I won't sleep on anybody, especially this season. It's a wild card season. Anybody can show up any given week, and we won't know who we got until November. But I like what this Wolverines team did over the weekend. I see a lot of potential for November. Um Tyler Spencer comments aside, but uh, going into um, this upcoming week, um, you guys, I believe, are we're off. You're off. Okay, just making sure I had to double check on that. So you guys will be off this week. Give me your impressions of playing the nine man game itself coming into. What was your experience like on a sideline coaching nine man for the first time? The gameplay itself, obviously, it's harder. It's more physical it's more demanding but i'll be honest there's a lot of downtime the amount of time between one play and the next play in my mind i'm like holy shit there went another 80 seconds off the clock like i just feel like there's there's not that many plays um whereas eight man i feel like it moves quicker so people are getting to the line quicker they're running but that's probably part of having to play harder every play it takes a little longer to get set back up and get ready to go in my mind i'm like Get back to the line. Go again, you know, quickly. Um, I'm more of a fast-paced kind of uh, keep punching them in the face kind of thing, you know, kind of kind of coach you. If, if you can do it, keep going. But, yeah, it's just I got to get used to it. It just takes time. I hey, mean, it didn't, it didn't help to come out against the, the best two teams around on day one. Not just one, but to have both of them back-to-back. Come on. Call that the football gods, I guess, right? That's just the that's just what it is, man. You're gonna get that bump every single week out there in this nine man game. The competition is just the best it's ever been. Oh no, I agree. I'm just saying that's tough. That's a tough draw for anybody. Facts, absolute facts. I I went. We went one and one. I'll be honest with you. You hate to say, oh, I'm happy with that. Whatever. One and one with X dogs and misfits. I call that a successful debut day. I'll take that. And especially you put up more points than uh, anybody – or you finally put up points on Misfits. They finally gave up some points in that game. So, Right. Uh, and, yeah, and you made your mark. They were all in the first half. I'll tell you what, by, by halftime of that second game spent, our guys were just dead. And then two or three in, just – that's my fault. I, I need to make sure guys are there. That, that's on me, not on the players. That's, a, that's tough, man, especially when you got to make that early 9 or 9 a.m. trip and coming all the way from a mix of Baltimore, York, Hanover, um, everywhere. Like, it seemed like you were just pulling from all over the place. You had a lot of friends there on the sidelines helping out. I like this effort because this is going to be a nice little uh, conglomerate of talent that you're going to see on the field. And I think that's good for guys because you get a chance to learn from a lot of different people about this nine-man game as you're going through your first season. And I feel, I think in the end, that's what's going to be really key to helping the Wolverines come playoffs is, of course, your long-term knowledge of the sport of flag football and their experience and knowledge of the nine-man game. You mix all that together, you're going to get a team – especially when you got T.J. Holston, a quarterback. Right. We've seen T.J. Holston do absolute work. In fact, he finally got a win on Rampage over the weekend. Congratulations, T.J. I know he's big hyped about that one. Um, 
Got a win on X-Dogs as well. He's going to come out. He's a baller. He's an A-bracket level quarterback. Right. Yeah, um, my, my goal is, obviously, Baez has their nine-man, the United Tournaments, whatever, as does uh, the Rebels, whatever. I figured if I can keep these guys, keep coming together to the sessions, to the leagues, you know, it gives them something to do between tournament time and things like that. And uh, I can maybe stop messing around with eight-man altogether. I mean, like, do what you got to do, man. Like, if it's if it's something you enjoy more, I say go for it. It's oh, definitely sure. – yeah, there's definitely potential to it. And, you know, it's tough. Like, the eight-man at YFFL, I do like. I do like it a lot. I like that style. It's just something that's not played widely right now because eight-man is so fragmented when you look at how it's ran across the country. It's – depending on what city you're in. Too many different roles. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's interesting because, like, every eight-man I've ever heard of is just so radically different than what you see everywhere else. Like, there's just no real unity with it. Everybody's <clears throat> just divided on what it should be. Some say triple threats. Some say uh, poppers. It's just – and don't get me wrong. I'm not agreeing one way or the other. I just feel like – what hurts eight man for me is just the inability to get any sort of unity like you find in the nine man level where there's only one nine man. Right. Um, but I do like it. And I do think if you want to make that move, I say, make it, man, chase it, make it happen. I like what I saw so far. I will say this will be the best team you will probably have at least on terms of overall talent, but you can make something even better out there. And my point, my, my goal was to bring the best team I could bring from YAFFL to try to, you know, represent the overall what Yapo has to offer, at least to a point. I think that's a good thing. And I think that is definitely something worth pursuing because of the fact that with YAFFL, you know, we said it, um, they tend to have some of – the best talent you'll find throughout this area. And they have so much of it. There is so many players. I believe we've said it before, 700 players registered in the YAFFL. And as time goes on, more people in the area get more drawn into it, grow with it. The nine-man style will definitely catch on with the linemen. I think a lot of the linemen will have to learn the physicality and adjust to it from coming over from York. But I think once they get hip to it and they see what it takes to play on that level, they're going to buy in in a very big way. And I'm really excited to see how that grows overall with YAFFL. We talked about it. Baez Auto is the kings of York. They have ran it for a while. Gusto has been giving them a shot, um, you know, but Gusto has not been able to really put together that kind of run on a Sunday like Baez has done over the years. Um, I know prime time wants to give it a chance. I have to see how they fare come up soon. Um, as time goes on, they've definitely grown a lot since I saw them last year in clash of York too. Um, and you know, you can't forget they had a very tough draw out the gate in that first clash because they had to put or a second clash when they had to play renegades and Titans. So they're going through the fire. I know seven, one, seven, the lead D wheels out there trying to put in the work. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing how York continues to develop into that nine man game. We talked about it. You don't necessarily need to play nine man to get that flag football experience and bump. You can come over from almost any style. As long as you get the chemistry down for your receivers, that extra fifth option will not hurt a quarterback at all. And the expanded field, you know, Tony Pena, the quarterback of the apex dragons, he plays six man tough league up there in New York. He also plays eight man, up in new era flag football and nine man for the dragons and GCFFA. He mentioned that extra fifth person on the field and the ability to also have an expanded field just made it easier for him to play quarterback because of the fact that he was so used to playing with limited options that he had chemistry down with his own guys. And, you know, if you get chemistry down with so many guys, if you're in a quarterback and you got a guy, you know, like a Ray Wagner who can make that transition from York eight man to nine, um, something definitely can grow there. And we talk about it all the time. Get the offense down chemistry-wise. Get three big bodies who can block. 
and find a defense that can execute, and you will win at this game. That was a beautiful take there. Eighth season. <laughs> eighth, no, eighth year. Let's be corrected. My eighth year. <laughs> 13 overall. You learn some things sometimes. But I'm really looking forward to seeing how the Wolverines do. You guys have a bye week. Um, when is your next game? Do you know offhand by any chance? Third, I believe. Um, the 9th of October. We're off this week, and then everybody's off the second for Clash. And then the, we have off two weeks, and then another week till we play again. We have, yeah, sucks. Oh, man, that's rough. Are all um, your games double headers, Jamie? No, we have one or two that are not. I think we have three double headers. Makes sense for you guys to try to get double headers, though. Yeah, so, and that's that's you know. why I asked that way. You know, guys traveling so far, we'd rather come up and knock out two and yeah. Whatever. Oh, double headers are the way to go. I feel like in flag. I know a lot of people have have been accustomed to the old school way of oh, you just come up, play your game, and go home. But I don't feel like that gives you the full experience, and I don't think that's worth anybody's time at this point. Because no, half, like, half time, unless you're like right there, right there, you know, you're halfway through the second quarter to your or second half till you're getting in the group. Yeah, you know like, what I mean, that's the thing about it. You think about it. Like a lot of guys have told me that first game in double headers, they just get warmed up, and by the second game, they're in their groove. By the third, they're starting to wind down a little bit. But you learn through tournament play to get through that Ironman style. And while I do think, you know, for local teams, it cannot be a bad thing to play one game a week, you know, if it's just not an inconvenience. But I do feel like if I want to get in, I want to make the most of my time. But I do get some guys might not be able to do that because time obligations, anything else. If anything, though, you're mitigating your travel, which I feel like that was my purpose. Yeah. Well, you know, I get that completely. Like, it's hard to just go out of your way all the way from – you're coming from Hanover or York. Which one, Jamie? I live in York. Okay, so you're a York guy. Um, but, like, yeah. like my son is going to school at Kutztown. So he's got to come from Kutztown to the KFFL, then to Hanover on Mon- uh, Sunday. So, obviously, my biggest thing is I'm, I'm trying to keep a team going one place or another. That way you got that father-son bond, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to – be part of the, the sport with Jordan as much as I can for as long as I can until he moves on, you know? Right, right. No, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, so, yeah, I think that's about it on my other questions. Um, Keith, you got any for Jamie? You know, I wasn't really able to watch much. Uh, I did watch the end of the X-Dogs, uh, end of the X-Dogs game. Definitely was uh, interesting to watch. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to really watch you guys much, so I don't have too many questions. I mean, I have a lot of questions, but uh, not until I can actually see you guys play up person. And I'll be there this week. I don't believe I'm going to have overtime at work, so I should be able to. And you're not going to be there. Nope. Nope. You'll miss out. It's okay. I I personally may be there to watch some games, but we don't play as a team. Yeah. Yes, so I guess I got to wait for the ninth also. You should just come hang out, like, and chill with us. Maybe I'll just come and carry around the camera for you. No, we need that. We're going to have Jamie Lagana debut as a live streamer soon. I think I, I think that's a move. I want to do that. Jamie, I've done that in the past a little bit, and then I, I ref down in the, in the York Leagues as well. So, busy weekends. There you go. Yeah, I know you've been. I know you've been roughing down in York. I saw you there uh, when I was down there week one. Right. <sighs> but uh, Lucas, you're falling asleep. Tell me what's up. Uh, Jamie, thank right. you for joining us. I don't know if you got any other word for tonight or not. We're gonna go ahead and talk to Lucas a little bit because he's been waiting for a while. Yeah, do you, man? All right, Jamie. Thank you. Lucas, how you doing? Good. Bro, good evening, you, Lucas. Doing good, man. Doing good. So you smoking on that demon pack? Yeah, just a bit. Man. Can we talk about that game and just how crazy that game was? 
Uh, um, yeah, that game was crazy. I'd say that. Bruh, from the beginning, you got to go uh, going over it, looking back at it. You had that play where Ron picks off, or no, let's start it out with Logic Keys coming in. Hey, big time pickup for you guys. That's a real good signing. I'm liking that little Hagerstown Martinsburg connection that's going on right now. That's something to keep an eye out um, and seeing how that connection develops. A lot of talent crossing over between those two. Um, and he had a pick six on Coach Clancy. Everybody doesn't know. Uh, Elijah played for him at the South High. Um, but he had a pick six on him on the conversion. Lucas, you threw a pick. Ron Savage picks it off. He's running out of the end zone. He pitches it right to Cash, who's standing inside the end zone. Extra point for Venom. Seven nothing out the gate. I couldn't believe that play. Now, that play really shook me. Bro, that caught me off guard. I just did not Whoa, see that. I didn't. Going. Yeah, I didn't even know that happened. Yeah, Ron. That's crazy. <laughs> he pitched the ball to Cash, who just happens to be standing in the end zone. And the ball just goes right to him. Cash does nothing to make that happen. He just happened to be there. And Ron, who I guess thought he was still playing with Cash on the program or something. Pitched it back to just Cash, who was just there. As a result, 7 nothing early on. Later on, it just gets worse. You know, you and Coley Jones, that backfield was insane to watch. Um, you know, it's a, low it's a pretty good backfield. It's a pretty good backfield. Yeah, That's like I, I saw something similar way back, way back in the day on program. Polo and Mac ran something very similar to that. And it worked out pretty well. I feel like though you and Coley, I think are a little bit of a step up on terms of running that. I've seen both. I've seen both of you play QB at times. Coley, believe it or not, is actually an underrated low key quarterback. He played with Bearcats back in 2015. In fact, I gave it a little nickname to that. Hey, 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 hey! You giving up my secrets, Joey? You better. Yo, yo I zip just it. know, bro. You gave it. away your secrets in the backfield. I see what you're doing. Everybody can see it. <laughs> Lucas, if I'm seeing it, I can tell you already. The top teams will figure it out when they watch film. They'll see that little wrinkle. But I'm telling you, though, he's a low-key guy. You got to watch him. He's a threat. And he showed over the weekend. We, we called that formation the Bearcat. Coley lined up in the backfield in that quarterback position. Um, he ran it to perfection. That play where – and I might be going out of order. Let's actually go in order. Let's go back to – let's go to that fourth down punt where you boot it and two demons – I can't remember who off the top of my head – run into each other, balls batted up, Vontae picks it off, runs it back, touchdown Venom on a botched punt return of all things. Oh, my God. That was the last touchdown. That was the last touchdown. The second touchdown. Like, I, mean, I, I forgot what up. the second one was, I'll be honest. I threw it up to uh, Will Jones, and then he – uh. Will Jones went up with two demons and then like they all collided and the ball like popped up and then Devontae just happened to be there to find the ball and then picked it up and scored. It was like a 40 yard bomb. Yeah. Dude, that was God, that was a crazy ass game, bro. Like, I'll be honest. Like everything about that game, the punt, the interception pitch back. And that for and that big third down conversion where you're running all the way to the sideline, you pitch it back to Coley. Coley, I swear, ran about 25 yards up the field before he just heaved it downfield. Yeah. And I, I was stunned because I'm like, how is he not over the line? But he wasn't over the line. He was behind yeah. the line of scrimmage still. First down venom, game clinched. Not a good day for the demons. <laughs> Demons, what are you doing? Like, I get it. You got 14, but. I was shooting. I was very happy how we, how, like, we, like, controlled our defense, how we, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, like, took what, you know what I'm saying? We took what, like, everything, you know what I'm saying? Like, we just took it and, you know what I'm saying, we ran with it. You know what I'm saying? Because Clancy's a good player. You know Max. what I'm saying? 
once you get up with him, you have to, you know what I'm saying, you got to get it. And, you know what I'm saying, you have to take it and run with it. You just can't look back when you have opportunities like that with a good quarterback that you're playing against. Yeah, and that's a guy that, I'll be honest, you want to have him, but you don't want to face him either. Like, he's one of those guys that yeah. if he's on your team, he's a valuable asset. If he's yeah, on your sure. team, you're in for a long day. His Kevin mobility Clint, game's kind of under the man, radar, too. He is you a man. Know, yo, he man, you know, he is the, oh. when people told me Clancy was coming, I was like, man, I was so mad. I was like, ah, Clancy. Another Clancy. You got to consider Clancy is the only national championship nine man quarterback in this league. Yeah, that's tough. He's the only one to win a natty and nine man. Um, and you got to think about it. The quarterbacks now for all these teams are just insane. Like Lucas, last year you were one of the top guys flying the radar. This year you got some stiff competition in this league. The talent you're facing every week now, especially when you look at these teams, like you look at what uh, prime time they got with – not prime time, misfits from the beginning. They got Chris Boone and Teso. So Chris Boone, the only quarterback in the four state with a five-man pro national championship. Um, the only one with a nine-man A circuit championship, Hagerstown 17. Of course, we talked about how he's dominated – Keystone. Chris Boone has never lost a game in Shippensburg. And really? he's never, never? Never lost a game in Shippensburg. TV, when he was with TBT at starting quarterback, he went 10-0, and and then he went 2-0 and when he was the villains for that one weekend. Now he's 4-0. and So I want to say Boone is about 16-0 and now in Shippensburg. And all time, Boone has only lost three games in the four state. Since coming yeah. to the four state for nine man for league play, he's only lost four games. On to, on I eighty one alone, he's only lost he's lost all four those four games, but they've been against teams that were legit. They were against the next dogs team that surprised a lot of people that day, including TNT. Muddy day too wasn't helping out there. Um, AFN uh, misfits and you know scorpions as well. But aside from that, Boone has dominated since coming up here for nine man, and you know. Behind Boone, you got Tay Sosa. And Tay, his resume speaks for itself. This was a man who at a very at a young age stepped up as a quarterback for the affiliate nation and made a big statement early on. Went on the Abert circuit with Mayhem for a bit, rode back with the affiliates, showed what he could do, very versatile. He won Washington County as a starting quarterback. He definitely has the credentials himself. So right there alone, two great quarterbacks in them. Then you go with prime time. Bob Moore, people sleep on Bob Moore. Bob Moore is one of the best quarterbacks you'll see out there play the game. His mobility is insane. He's smart. He knows the game pretty well in terms of strategy. He can make a lot of things happen out there. He is a dangerous athlete. And when he has his guys around him, you can get a very high-flying competitive attack. Um, you know, we talked about Keenan Pooler and the Tri-State Spartans. Keenan's improved significantly. Um he stepped it up in a big way over the last year or so. I I don't have I don't think he's one of the top guys anymore of how big it's gotten over the last year. I do think though he's t- he's changed his game a good bit. We'll see how the Spartans go throughout the season. There's someone we'll talk about a little later on. Um, T.J. Holston now in Wolverines. He's an A-level quarterback. Um, he's gotten some big circuit wins this year. We talked about the win he had on the Rollers in Ocean City. Um, hey Joe. Yeah. When are you going to start putting some respect on my name? I'm just asking. You got some circuit wins, too. Hold on a second. Here's something that people don't know. Here's something that people don't know. Lucas Hall was the starting quarterback for the Tri-State Spartans in all four of their circuit wins this year. All of them. Lucas Hall's got four circuit wins as a starting quarterback this year. Sure do. 717 Elite, Killer Bees. Bulls, Jets, say what you want. It's lower end competition, but he's gotten more circuit wins this year than Broad Axis had as a team in the last four years, than Ruckus had in their entire circuit run, than a lot of teams, including the Red Knights in their final year, had on terms of circuit wins. 
telling you, the competition has really grown. And players like Lucas Hall stepping up, going out there and competing. And believe it or not, Lucas has had more reps of Venom than he had with the Spartans. That tells you. No. The talent. Yeah, no, for real. At quarterback, yeah. That's the crazy part. For sure. For sure. That tells you what a guy like him can do. That just shows you. And then you look at the other teams across the board, you know. Uh, we talked about Holston, Sean Simmons coming in with the outlaws. He got them their first win. And honestly, he looks like he's got them in the right direction right now. He's only played two nine-man games. I got DL. DL. Hold on. Who's DL? I think <laughs> Danny Longerbeam, is it? Hey, you know. Wait a minute. Danny. Oh, no. Yep, nope. You're getting the boot. Ah, oh man, who that? Nah, no, somebody, nope, somebody who's uh, who's not local to Keystone. Sorry, we're strictly a Pennsylvania and Maryland show. We don't air in Massachusetts. We apologize. Anyways, back on topic. I thought that was my old coach. Dang, till, man. I can't wait till uh, shoot the first game we play the X because. Last year, you know what I'm saying, it was a dog fight, and they won at the last second. You know what I'm saying, beat us by six. I can't wait. I can't wait for that game. Lucas, put a seatbelt on. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. I don't Jesus, drive, encouraging, no encouraging dangerous habits like right now on live. Stop it, Joey. All right, there we go. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> 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 What's up, Dallas first? Anyways, um, but yeah, we talk about it. You know, the rest of the quarterbacks, Matt Eisenberg, TJ Williams. Um, Marty Spruce has been one of those guys who stepped up his game. The amount of quality starters, guys, you could just go with is just insane. Right you should now. rank them sometime. I, 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 I will do some at the end of the season because, like, this is a pretty deep quarterback pool in terms of guys who can make offense happen. That's something yeah, yeah, over the years we talk. Yeah. And, and, you know, a lot of years locally, we've had a lot of issues with guys maintaining starting quarterback roles and being able to put up points on a consistent basis. Um, you know, for years, um, Ryan Grable, Matt Eisenberg, Chris Boone, they all stepped up in big ways. And we're putting up the points. Tyler Murdoff as well. Andy Hoffman when he played quarterback. Um, you also have guys along the way, uh, Scotty Scott. But other than that, like, we had a bit of a downturn in that position, I feel like, a bit in this area a few years ago during that spring of 19 season where while we had Boone and Clancy in the league, there was a bit where third place was a battle back and forth with Stephen Renner and Cody Snavely. And other than that, when you got beyond that, you didn't really have much. Adam a lot. Um, that season was struggling and going downhill. Cody had managed a good game. Steven as well. They were quality starters for Ruckus and Warriors at that time, but not playing to a level that you're seeing a lot of the guys right now are. And I think that tells you the amount of growth you're seeing in that position over the last two years. And I think a lot of that is the out-of-town talent that's come into this area from York, Pennsylvania, that's come up here from Baltimore, D.C. Like every week when you're in Keystone, if you were to take the addresses of everybody and where they were from, you'd be blown away by the amount of zip codes that you'll find across the board because the talent is diverse right now. It's insane right now. It's some of the best we are seeing. And I'm really, really looking forward to seeing how it all grows. I agree. What other games do we have to get to there, uh, recap-wise? Um, let's talk about uh, – so, Venom, you guys are 2-0 and o right now. Uh, this week you will be having competition, some pretty stiff competition, X-Dogs and Tri-State Spartans. I know a few weeks ago you pretty much put it out there that you didn't really feel too threatened by that X-Dogs D-line when you played them the last time. Yeah, I'm not worried. We should be 4-0. Yeah. We should be 4-0 at the end of this week. My thoughts, honestly. 
Four and zero, straight up, just like that. Yeah. Man, you, who did you say the second game was against, Joey? Tri-State Spartans. Lucas oh, well, going to go I, against his, uh, his circuit team, I guess. Unless Venom was – They beat us by one last year. That's what people really don't know. Like, they had their whole core starter team, and they only beat us by one. And, like, our team was not that good like this year. That's the thing about it. I actually think this West Virginia Venom team, it's crazy, man. You you were there. You saw what Green Machine was. Oh, and, and what oh a, yeah, a year ago. Sure. Man, man, you don't understand. I had to do some recruiting proof. They, yeah, that's <laughs> the thing. Those guys needed help, man. They needed help. They were they were left on the side of the road. They didn't have a home to go to. And I think the biggest and best move they made was bringing you in and I think that investment and allowing you to take the charge and responsibility you have so far has paid off in a big way. We talk about it. The West Virginia Venom is now five and seven on the year. You, Lucas Hall, you got four circuit wins. You've gone out there and got the experience. You've got you've gone out there and recruit. We've seen the Coley Jones come over and play. I think that was a big gift for you guys. Um, yeah. AJ, we saw AJ Petri, who I've heard that name so many times for the last six years, come out and play. Um, yeah. He was in my camp for survivors back in the second season with Coley when Coley had just okay. finished high school to put it in perspective, how long ago all that was. Yeah. Um, but like, see, like, see, see, or like, well, people really don't know. Like, me and Coley go way, way back. Like, diapers. Like, we knew each other when we was in diapers. Yeah, I do. That's crazy. Like, I'm glad that, like, you guys have, like, stayed close over the years and are able to put together a team like this to come out and compete on behalf of that whole region. And especially as somebody who I've seen, like, Nine Man grow in – Berkeley County significantly and I mean significantly and there are always guys who came up from Martinsburg you always had that talent there had been a bit of a while in Washington County back in 2013 when there was only four teams period hard to believe that eight years ago there were only about 120 or so players playing nine yeah yeah and that's wow yeah and that was it and not many of them were coming from that Berkeley County region. But seeing what you guys have done with West Virginia Venom, seeing what you've done with the Tri-State Spartans, and, you know, you talk about along the way what Chris Boone, Cannon Hall, and a couple other guys who are living in that area right now who come out there and they get a chance to play ball when they can have done over the years. I really appreciate what – this that area is bringing the flag football right now. Um, and I said it for years. West, West Virginia is a big part of the growth. Cutting out. Oh my. Yeah, that's Lucas. Yeah. There you go. Oh, there it is. There it is. What? Yeah. Was, was that all you had to say was yeah? Yeah, because I didn't know what you were saying. Oh. <laughs> you were cutting up real bad. Who, me or him? No, Lucas. Oh, okay. But, yeah, man, like, I'm really excited what's going to happen. Um, I look forward to seeing how you guys do. We're going to have the games this week. I'm really excited about it. Always love to see the West Virginia Venom in action. They what time are, do you guys play? Uh, they're playing at uh, – they're the first game of the day, actually. They're going to be All kicking right. it off. That's going to be the biggest factor, getting everybody up that early from down there. But we'll see how it goes, man. Best of luck to you, Lucas. Best of luck to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have Planet Fitness or something? No, I think he's at Sheets. Yeah, sheets. Okay. All right. I'm just giving him the boot. Bye, Lucas. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even hear anything. I'm about to report him to Zoom and everything. Lucas's iPhone has been removed. There we go. 
All right. Do I have that rendered right now? Is it almost done? Let me tell you, man, what a week. What 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 a night. What a night. Glad everybody on. Anybody wants to still hop on and talk about anything, feel free to. Um I'm really excited. Yeah, we can uh I guess move to the what is the next week's schedule? Did you bring that up? Oh, I got everything ready to go. I got my right. PowerPoint finally completely rendered. Heard that. Yeah. I was not home at any point in time today until like just before we went on the air. So I'm a little behind. I've been behind all my flag stuff lately. Like new videos are scarce right now, kids. Be alert. There's a shortage of new videos being edited. Wolverine's taking over, says Borrowland Car. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Y'all did predictions already? Why wow, you want on, Ross? I'll send you the invite if you want on. No, we didn't do predictions already, Ross. Nah, he's been busy. He's working. That's why he. Yeah, asked. yeah, yeah. No, he commented. Yeah, I'll come over there, slap him in his face. He don't watch himself. I'm kidding. I'm not gonna actually slap him in the face. Yeah, that wouldn't be a very friendly thing to do. Yeah, I'm not a friendly person. I'm sorry. I'm a terrible person. Uh, he's gonna do his predictions from the comments. All right. So try hard sports, KFFL, TVT. You like you like the uh, graphic there, Keith? I love the graphic. I even put the Shippensburg Community Parks and Rec Authority on there. And it, you know that's something that I think was right of you to do, but I don't think anybody would have thought of it. So good move. Let me just good say move. I think of everything. Uh, this guy's talking shit about YAFFL in the comments. Damn, Ross, y'all lost fifty-two nothing to the Wolverines. Warriors are trash now. Jesus. Whole team went downhill since I left. All right, SCPRA. There we go. This was the results. We already talked about it. Let's highlight some other games that weren't really mentioned. Misfits beat the Spartans via forfeit. I talked to Marquise before the show just to see what's up because there's rumors. You know how this is. We had a high school around here. Um, speculation spartans are still on they'll be playing saturday just some concerns about family and covid uh, hope to see them on the field like i said they've had a good year um it's a shame this was a forfeit game because of the fact that it could have been that, a little it could have been a good game to watch it had potential like yes you know like people forget the spartans played chris boone very close last year when they played showtime and I feel like you never know what you're getting. I um, feel like they had some guys coming. It's a shame that all goes down, though. So Misfits beat them by a forfeit. I'm going to count the Misfits win, but I'm not going to count towards my point standings because of the fact that I don't mess with forfeits to me. There's no points to it. Just leave it alone. I don't. My, my standings don't even matter anyways. It's just <laughs> I do. I, I just make up stuff for entertainment. Um, outlaws over killer bees 12 to 7. Hey, okay. Key, you know, defend your boys. You know, I watched this was actually we had a uh, little gap in between our matches, and uh so I watched a good chunk of this game. And undermanned, uh Anthony was our quarterback, and uh yeah. It, you know, the outlaws have gotten better. You know, they've put in the work like we've said on every show so far. They have uh, continued to improve. And, uh, you know, this was a big moment for them. For the bees, I'm hoping this is kind of a gut check. And we can uh, – this is our moment of hitting rock bottom of sorts. And uh, we just – keep working at it and keep getting better at it. Uh, you know, chances to win this game, you know, Ant, Ant was our quarterback. It wasn't TJ. That was uh, something that, you know, not a whole lot of practice with. Uh, still, again, a new mixture, guys. Uh, I Grant, I mean, you know, it is what it is. You know, and the numbers – Numbers were rough. 
you know, I wasn't there either. So like I said, I was watching it as a fan and, uh, you know, that's that, uh, killer bees. Well, we're going to keep working at it. We'll keep getting better. This is just a little bump on the road to the ultimate goals. So, uh, we'll keep growing. Uh, but shout out to the outlaws. West Virginia Venom over the Demons. We already talked about that one as well. Uh, you know, I do recall picking that game, uh, Venom to win that game. So they, uh, you know, I'm proud of them. And then the final game, which we haven't talked about, and we don't have full data of evidently, was Demons Pure Chaos. Uh, Demons decided to show up for that game. Or was it that pure chaos didn't show up? What, which one was it, Joey? D who won this? Did pure chaos lose it or did the demons win it? Every time pure chaos takes the field, they lose. Unless, it, unless, unless, unless RJ is a quarterback playing. Chaos, I have to say, is it's cutting RJ. Or actually, since RJ retired, I should say. And I feel like the effects are feeling it right now for chaos. Remember, Sorry, catching up on comments there. Sorry, catching up on comments. He's been there for both of their wins, man. He beat the Warriors last year. Straight up, beat the Warriors. Oh, you have Clancy out there. You have any – you can win any game. I ain't talking about chaos. I ain't talking about – god damn it, I'm tired of myself. I'm just sorry, like, like I three times on that sentence, so it's okay. I'm trash. Maybe we're too. Maybe we're too trashed. I'm not even. Uh, no, I'm. I'm just. I'm just Joey. I do need a reason. Demons and chaos. Demons yeah, and it, was chaos. 20, it was twenty-one nothing when I left. Um, my phone was overheating because it was stupid hot out the whole day. And by the time we got to the third quarter of that game, both battery packs had died. And my quarterback, oh, Shane played quarterback in OMFFL. Really, Regan? I'm going to assume it was the – I don't know. I guess the last game was against Bulls. That's good stuff. Good stuff for O'Shane. I'm happy to hear about that. I wasn't at always Mills this weekend, so I'll get a chance to catch that. I'm happy to hear about that for a shame. That's really awesome. Um, but yeah, Demons was up 21 0 when I left. Um we'll talk about chaos in a minute. <laughs> Have to muster up that conversation. Here we go. Let's, here's my standings. I don't think I screwed up, but I probably did. This is what the league's looking like from a standings perspective. Um, number 10, of course, is Pure Chaos, 0-2. Um, chaos is disappointing me. They really are. Mostly because of the fact that I know they're better than this. They've shown they are. I've heard they can't get their guys here. I think they've screwed their schedule up because I'm pretty sure they're only playing one game a week all season. Which, if you have traveling issues, you that's not the way to travel. schedule it. Yeah, you got to mitigate your travel, bro. I get it. I think they fully, you know, they expected to be in Hagerstown. They thought they'd be in Hagerstown, so they recruited the way they thought so. But to me, it's not really a valid excuse because of the fact that I feel like chaos needed to get double headers play a little less try to organize it it's tough like it's a third season team and i'm speaking as somebody who's ran numerous teams been part of organizations some successful some shit depending on which ones it was um you just got to mitigate for these kind of situations and Honestly, for chaos, you haven't filled many roster spots. So it's like if you don't have your guys coming that you recruited, go out there and find some people who are available. There are plenty of guys sitting at home right now because of the fact that their normal team is not playing this fall. And because of that, some guys are kind of lost. Some guys already have an idea. 
just just ask anybody go around make friends you know just like andy hoffman said make friends make all the friends in the world i'm sure there's somebody out there you know i want and you know contact somewhere i mean birdman and Dion pedro once linked to pure chaos you can get anybody if you can get birdman and Dion. where is birdman and Dion anyways for chaos Number nine, Killer Bees, 0 and 2. You guys are sitting at a minus 20 on the year. Chaos, a minus 26. That's a guesstimation. Um, Based on what the final score actually was. Yeah, I'm not sure what that final was, unfortunately. Josh, you're watching. Do you happen to know what that final score was? Yeah, let us know in the comments. Um, Killer Bees, in my honest opinion. You guys have hit the bottom, I think. I don't know. You still have to play pure chaos. Well, we've hit hit a a who made who bowl. A who made who bowl. Oh, my God. We've played it for years, bro. Oh, I know. I know. I mean. We were talking, how can killer bees ever play pure chaos? And here we are. Pure chaos finally gets to play their B team. Hey, you watch that. What? You guys are the bees. Uh-huh. What? I'm just saying. Was that pun intended? No, there was no pun. Oh, okay. I, I was saying you guys are the bees, so you're their bees. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. Just yeah. want to make sure that was your intent there, sir. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, let me just see. I just – chaos, you know, they were big budgeted. They had the fancy smancy uniforms. Um, you know, um, the toilet tornado logo. Oh my God. Somebody commented that on one of the, their game that I did on week one, oh, someone was, said I their logo was a toilet was tornado yep, and I will never that. unsee that. Yeah. We, uh, I'm going to make an ultimatum here. <laughs> Nobody ever do tornado logos ever. They never look good. <laughs> the only good one I saw was the gold mayhem one with the white shirt. That looked nice. Even then, the original mayhem logo, tornado. No, tornado. No, I don't think you played mayhem, Keith. So you don't know. No, no, I have not. That was a rough one, but regan fixed it with the gold one he fixed it and it looked way better like the way he did it with the mayhem one that's a good jersey i'm gonna hang that up again one day um chaos went for the tornado y'all gotta stop it stop at the tornadoes that, i don't know what that thing is <laughs> i don't have to say that <laughs> god damn. chaos oh god jesus i can't talk shit because y'all beat the warriors last year but damn <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> no, <laughs> all I gotta say is bring. All I gotta say is y'all need to send a max offer out to RJ right now. Bring back RJ. He's got your. He's he was the OG. Had that team in the direction. It was a great inspirational story to watch. Final score twenty eight to seven. I'm, I'm also biased to shit though because he's a family friend. 28-7. 28-7 was the final score. So oh, okay, I scored. So my point differential is not different, but my point for it against is okay. I'll keep that in mind when I redo this next week. Number eight, X Dogs. Hometown team's not doing so hot here. Oh and two. I'm Come curious. On. Was uh Kinsler and Brady both there this past week? I'm not disrespecting you, Marty. I'm just an RJ fan. RJ is my dad's quarterback. He was also my quarterback. I'm going to vouch for my guy every time. You my guy too, Marty. I said it like you're up there in one of the top quarterbacks up here. Chaos has a good move right now. Y'all just need numbers. But X-Dogs, X-Dogs have Kenser and Brady. They're just not... Isaiah's playing a lot of these games, and I got nothing against Isaiah. He's not Matt, though. So you're not really getting exactly what you expect come playoff time. But that said, maybe Isaiah does come out in QB playoffs. 
I do think Matt's trying to get him out there a little bit more, which I think is good for him um, to give him a chance to develop his game a bit. Yeah. But right now, we're not really getting the full dogs yet. You know, I think you're going to see a different team come uh, November. We saw that last year in the Washington County playoffs. They had a very tough fall season. They were two and six. Um, they upset the Warriors in the quarterfinals and then fell just short to the Misfits in the semis after being down two touchdowns just to lose by two. So you're going to see a team that throughout the season will have these growing pains and bad weeks. Matt ain't worried about it. He's got a plan. He'll watch film. He'll study tendencies. He'll figure it all out. I've watched him too long to see him go down like that. But it's tough for both of them right now because both of them in local proximity, albeit B is kind of a bit of a different flavor. It's just tough for the hometown teams right now. Next one ahead, Demons, number seven. They're one and three. They got a minus 44 overall. Um my opinion yeah. on Demons is that first game was a nightmare. I get it. You only have 14. Got to get those numbers up a little bit, fellas. But just it was just a disaster of a game with Venom. Ron's pitch, you had the pick six class he threw before that. Just letting Lucas and Coley run wild on you in the backfield. Just a tough, tough, tough game for the Demons team. Second game with chaos, they had no problems, but Kevin Clancy typically plays well against chaos. He was not there when the Warriors lost that day um, to chaos. And then when he played him again later, he had a time of his life on uh, River Bottom against them. And once again, another big effort by him against pure chaos. Demons, however, they are in a predicament where – they're not off to the start. I think a lot of us thought they'd be at. I think we thought we'd see a team that was going to go out and compete early on. Instead, we're getting a team that has pieces. It's just maybe the full picture right there yet. You know, like I said, it's a young season. Playoffs are anything that matters. And at the end of the day, as long as you're not drawing that team in purple, you know, the one right here, the real team in purple, you're good to go in the first round. You want to get them in the later rounds. After that, moving up, Outlaw 6-6. Six and six, Or, wow. Well, <laughs> they're they're 500. One, you had that part right. One and one. Hey, you got to give a shout-out to the Outlaws. Hey, shout-out to Kenny Diener as well, the Outlaws, Cancer Survivor jersey. Kenny, if you're watching, please meet me at some point. We've been I'm trying to get you for a year now. We'd like to get you your jersey. Shout out Kenny Diener. All love to you. Another family friend, former player on my dad's team way back. Um, they're six. Is, God damn. They're one and one, sixth place overall. Um, I think this is the best team they fielded yet. I think this is better than any Spartans team. This is better than the Browns last year. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This is better than the first Outlaws team. This is a team that, while they aren't an elite team, they're playing on the level they need to play on in order to grow. And right now, the potential is there. Your recruiting grounds have expanded. You definitely have something to build off of. And beating the Killer Bees, I think that, that meant a lot to Tom Matthews. He was genuinely happy at the end of that game. He had not beaten the Killer Bees leading up to that in KFFL play, going back to that very first season the league operated. And that was special for him. We had talked about it, like, coming in. They had only had five wins total um, as a franchise, two against the Browns, uh, one against the Gators, two against the Green Machine. Now they get the Killer Bees. Um, and I think for them – while it may not be the bees team of last spring or the one from three years ago, I think just beating the bees alone was a big, big day for this team. That was something that had been a hurdle for them for a long time. It's just like when a small college beats that big local school for the first time and a road game or a home. Appalachian game. state beats Michigan. I would say if anything, kind of like more, 
when Maryland came up there and kicked Penn State's ass last year. Oh, my God. Get off the screen. My Terrapins came Get off the screen. Get off the screen. Hey, what can I say? Hey, number six right now. I don't care. Where's the Terps at right now? Where'd that win last year get you guys right now? A 3-0 start in the year where we've beaten West Virginia. Where we are playing, we beat Illinois the other night. We're three and zero. We got Kent State this weekend. Um, oh, that's a tough game. Oh yeah, Kent's always going to bring it, dude. Let me tell you, Kent Page State is going to bring it every time. Um, you also got Iowa next week, and then Penn State has to come down and play us, and uh, and that's when we get in our lick of revenge. Well, that's I mean, that's, you can think that. I mean, I say all this, and I guarantee you some dumb shit happens when we lose Talia for the season like it always does. Maybe we need but, to look into going to that game, Joey. You know, I've never – I've only been about two Maryland games in my life, a one and one Florida State in 06. Ross Collins was at that game, and Marshall in 2013 – the 06 game was better. But, you know, for the Outlaws, it was just like that. Just like when Maryland beat Penn State. Oh, my God. All right. Anyway, yeah. on to number five. And when Maryland, just like, just kind of like what we do in Nine Man, too. We try to come up to your all state and just beat up on you guys. Look, right now, that is a rough debate to talk about, sir. I don't see much of a debate when I look at these standings. At this no, that's that's what I mean, sir. That, you know, you know. I think here in the future that is a good, good, solid matchup to look at. Right now, it's a little rough with arguably two of the better PA teams history wise in KFFL, X Dogs and Bees sitting at zero and two. It's a little rough. It's looking pretty rough for you guys, honestly, when I take a look at these standings. You know, Tri-State's only losses at forfeit. And, you know, they're not a Maryland team per se, but they're one of our guys down here in the South. I got to say something. We just – just a lot of good teams. A lot of good teams. Number five, Wolverines. TJ Holston is a big addition. You know, he's a KFFL guy all the way. You saw what he did with Misfits a few years ago. You saw how tough it got every single week going up against that Misfit attack of T.J. Halston. Well, those nightmares are back for secondaries this season. T.J.'s a baller. He plays at an A level. I'm really looking forward to seeing how him and the Wolverines do the rest of the way. This is a team that I think come playoffs is a team to look out for come November because there's still more talent they could pull from and more guys coming. I can guarantee you that. Well, he said he does have 34 of the 35 on a roster, so you know, we'll see if we ever see that many show up. Remember, everybody is a free agent. That's not already on a team. Let's not try to encourage stealing players, guys. You know, it's a wrong thing to do, and, you know, it's un- immoral. Terrible when you steal players. Juju comes back to bite. Oh, yeah. And I don't mean – like Juju Schuster Smith. <laughs> I bash on the Steelers, but you're a Cowboys fan, so that won't really matter. Oh no, I'll join in with you on that party. Yeah, so I can't we can't really do that. Um, so Tri-State Spartans one and one forfeit. Can't really I, say it reflects on anything. I think your plus minus is slightly off there, sir. Yeah, I noticed that when I pulled it up. I was like, ah, I got my venom backwards with my Spartans. To a degree. I didn't even know the Venom one. I see so you could tell I half assed this. That's why I'm trash. Hashtag uh, I'm trash. No, it's not trash. It's uh it's colorful and it's mainly accurate. That is all we ask for. Mainly accurate. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I appreciate that, Mr. <laughs> but yeah, Venom 2 and 0 plus 22. That's a solid start for their show in this year. They're actually going to be yeah. a plus 18 there. Spartans are plus 22. Oh, I got gotcha. you. 
Yeah, right. yeah, I did not do the math on that one. No, myself, you, so. you just look at the chart I put up for you, which is my fault, one hundred percent. No, but still being plus eighteen. Talk, in that talk case, for a few more seconds while I get a water. You're good. No, plus plus eighteen for Venom. That's a good spot to be. You're building off of what you were building last year. Uh, it's a good spot to be in. Prime time, plus twenty two. Uh, you know, guys didn't play last week. So nothing to really build on. You guys, again, look like you're getting better. More pieces, uh, more camaraderie. Those are two solid games you put up in week one. And the Misfits, again, I didn't get to see the two games here last week. But, uh, you know, domination, 102 points scored in four games. And uh, third game of the year, well, three and a, one of those was a forfeit. But so 102 points in three games, that's unheard of. 12 points allowed. <laughs> I mean, it's just incredible. You have the first team at a plus 92 point differential and number and the number two team at a plus 22. That is 70 points. That is crazy. 102 points in three games, Joey. And you got to consider the average of that. You're looking at an average right That's now. That's 33, 34. 34 points per game, sir. 34 points per game. And that's just the numbers you expect from a Chris Boone offense. But you throw in Tay Sosa in there as well. Man, oh, man, oh, man. The talent that has come up to this league, and we just seen how it's taken over. Nope, it's going to be exciting to finish. It's going to be exciting to see it continue up into this week. See, oh, uh, see yeah. how this week changes things around a little bit. You know, divided us by divisions. You know, these are the PA teams of sorts. Primetime, Wolverines, Outlaws, X-Dogs, Killer Bees. And I get it. Not everybody's from PA. And not everybody on the South teams are from Maryland or West Virginia. But, you know, I decided to have some fun with this. Let's toy with some divisions, make it a little interesting. Um, these are unofficial, by the way, just helping to make it fun between the guys. You know, just a little bragging rights in your own region. And the way I've aligned is you have your overall record here in the beginning. And your second column is going to be your division record. And your third column is out of division record. So far, we've only played four out of division games. Um, prime time is one and oh in that one. They beat the demons in that crossover game. Um, they have the lone win for the north so far out of the four games. Wolverines, they're one and one. They beat X Dogs, and of course, they lost to the Misfits. Um, they're sitting at one and oh in division games, oh and one out of division. Outlaws, they're one and oh, one and oh in division, oh and one out of division. Beat the bees, lost to the misfits. Wow. Outlaws ahead of the dogs and the bees. Wow. Even crazier to look at this North Division. Two <laughs> YAFFL teams in first place and second place up in that North Division right now with a combined three and one record. I got to give it up for YAFFL and York. They've come out and made a statement early on coming over here in the nine man. But like I said, still early in the game. And unfortunately, we won't get to see either of the York teams for a bit. We're not going to see them actually until after Clash of York. Although prime time and some of and about all of Wolverines will be there in some capacity. Um, we're really looking forward to seeing how they do the rest of the way. Gotta say though, Keith, Outlaws out of all the KFFL originals have the best record at one and one. No, oh, man. I, that this doesn't look right, but uh, it is what it is. You know, we're and we're rebuilding X Dogs. I don't really know what you know. They played uh, shit. They played Prime Time and uh, Misfits, right? Yeah, they. Uh, yeah, X Dogs played Prime. So time. those are they those are two tough games Marines. to start off with. So. Yeah, they've had their, they did their tour of York with Prime Time and Wolverines. Or oh, Wolverine, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they, they will play Misfits later on, though. Everybody plays yeah. each other. So 
you know, they had a they had a tough drawing at the start, but they'll bring it in. We all, we know they always do, and their record, as we've said, doesn't really mean much until playoff time. You know, that's a that's a whole nother animal when it comes to the X Dogs. So facts, absolute facts. And that's and we'll see how it progresses throughout the year. You know, Outlaws their only win so far is on Killer B, so they got the one win over the longtime rival X Dogs will be an interesting game for them. Um, Got to give it up, though, like I said, to the two York teams coming in, primetime Wolverines. They've made a statement so far. We'll see if they can hold on and win that Pennsylvania division. Let's take a look at the South a little bit and see how things are going down South. There we go. Fifth place, pure chaos, 0-2 and and overall. They have lost both games in division, the Venom and Demons. Uh, they will go out of comp division for the first time this week when they play the Killer Bees. Um, chaos, like I said, they need to make friends. There's plenty of friends out there. You got friends in Ruckus and Broad Axe, bring them in. They're sitting at home right now. Bring in some of those guys. There has to be guys interested in coming up here. Like, there's definitely somebody who's craving the itch to play football even if it's not what it is normally. Get up there, get some of those guys, bring your buddies up. Fourth place, Demons, one and three. One and two right now within the division, 0 and one out of it. They've already played three of their four division opponents already, which um, is pretty crazy when you think about it. Uh, Losses to Misfits and the Venom, they beat Chaos. Only one they have left is the Spartans. Other than that, the rest of the way, they're going out of division for games. Um, so they'll be playing four of those coming up. But so far for Demons, tough slate, tough draw, tough sledding. Hopefully things get better for them. We were hoping this was going to be the new gen of Cram, the new strain, and unfortunately the Terpenes ain't right on this new strain yet. You got to modify it some more. Maybe throwing in some pinene, maybe some myrcene. If they're not careful, they could find their way under 500. Yeah, man. Increase the THC, anything to make that cram work. They got to do something because right now that season's slipping and they only got four games to get guys in. Um, Honestly, they they got, like I said, the two week rule really changed things in KFFL. Um, it really did. I feel like going down that extra game now, you got guys making one visit, one weekend stops, and that's going to play a factor down the road. Because I think you got a lot of guys showing up on that last week, closer to playoffs, so they get that figured out. Demons will keep evolving. Tri oh, State Spartans. Sure. Yeah. Tri State Spartans, third place, one and one. They're one and zero within outside of the division. They beat the bees, zero and one in the division. Took the forfeit to misfits. You know we can't really comment much because of the forfeit. Hopefully we'll see them in form this week. Number two, West Virginia Venom. Hey, that's pretty crazy. Venom second place, third overall in the league. Who would have thought Venom? Can we we say that Venom and Outlaws are three and one? Yeah, Venom and Outlaws are a combined three and one. The former Green Machine and Browns are three and one. And it's what the hell is going on, bro? And it's crazy because three is the combined amount of wins they had last last year. year. Yeah, yeah, they've already surpassed that this fall. And what is arguably the strongest KFFL league you've seen. This is the great, and so far, like you're seeing it. And they're stepping up in the big way. That's a franchise that, you know, they're on their third owner right now. Uh, Lucas Hall taking over for Johnny Cocho after Cocho took over for Daniel Taylor. Um, So we're going to – so the evolution of this team from what was supposed to be a second generation of – or really the third – actually fourth generation of survivors at this point – to what you're seeing now, which is more of a combination of guys from Martinsburg and Hagerstown schools and Musselman and all over. There's guys down the 81 corridor, some of whom got to know each other on that broad ax team and know each other from facing off against each other over the years, football camps, 
you're seeing a bunch of young guys in their early to mid twenties and a few older dudes coming in as well on a team that has a lot of long-term potential. If I can get it going. For sure. On a great track right now. I would love on to a see, great track. I would love to see Venom play Clash of York. I really would. I really think Venom and Tri-State Spartans and Killer Bees should get something together if they can. Well, the Bees are going to Clash. And, of course, Misfits first place, 4-0, 2-0, 2-0. Sunday they went 2-1. Um, they defeated the Maryland Venom, Robbie Sparks and company, um, as well as the Bulls. Um, took a loss to Rampage, however. We hope Chris Boone is okay. Uh, Boone was injured in the Rampage game. Um, you know, he's going to try to take some time and heal up. That's no problem for this Misfits team, though. They got Tay Sosa right behind them. Uh, you could plug in Larry if he gets on there at some point. You know, Shane Thorpe, he'll probably pop up soon. Tyler Spencer got some work. This team's fine. As long as they got their core guys there and they got John Regan on the sidelines. They ain't going to tell them They, they won't ever have a problem. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Let's take a look. Week two schedule. Here we go. First game out the gate, X-Dogs and Venom. This is the second all-time meeting between these two. Are, are we uh, Are we doing predictions? No, I'm just doing the schedule preview. Oh, right. look, and then we'll do predictions. Um, X-Dogs, Venom, right out the gate. This is the second meeting all time between these two. First meeting, you have to go back to 2021, just about a few months ago. Why was I saying it like that? Um, here's me acting like it was 10 years ago. <laughs> um, X Dogs beat Venom in that first game, 21 14. We just posted it the other day. Lucas Hall said he didn't feel very threatened by that X Dogs D line. We'll see how much that changes. And if they can keep up with Lucas and Coley, that, that combination is going to be crazy to look at. Um, I make the call, Ross. That's the answer. You don't need to call in. I make the call. Um, we're dividing it based on region. We're going with the north-south thing. Just a nice little side note. Yeah, kind of just thing. Keep, I just want to make it fun, you know, just to like see like how all these teams are matching up region wise. And North teams are PA teams, two YAFFL teams crossing over, and three of the KFFL originals. The other five are in the South, of course. Misfits, you know, they play across the DMV. <laughs> West Virginia Venom, they're down there in the WB. Tri State Spartans, they're in the WB as well. Um, Demons, of course, you know, they're the old cram. They're all based out of Frederick and Hagerstown. And, of course, Pure Chaos, um, originally, you know, from around here, a Frederick Hagerstown team as well. So a bit of a geographical thing. I know guys come in from all over the place. I just go on franchise origins just to make it a little fun. But, you know, X-Dogs um, and Spartans after that at 10.05. This will be the, let me count, one, two, three, four, five, six meeting between these two. Um, Spartans trail this three to two. x Dolls won the first two games. First meeting was back in the fall of 16 in Washington County. x Dolls defeated Food Lion that day um, to get the win. That was the original Spartans team, Don's old Food Lion squad. And then the next year, x Dogs defeated the Greencastle Antrim Spartans in the Washington County League. Um, two years later, Tri-State finally got their turn at it, still lost to the x Dogs, however. Um, last fall, however, broke through for the first time in the greatest Washington County season when the Spartans defeated the x Dogs 12-6. And then once again, this past spring, it was 20 to 17 Spartans over X Dogs, a game that you keep, Giles, had while I was in Atlantic City. You were in Shippensburg for that one. Your memories of that X Dog Spartans game? I don't have too many off the top of my head. All right. Next to game up. Yeah. <laughs> this one's going to be interesting. Battle of West Virginia, Tri State Spartans and the West Virginia Venom. 
Um, two teams that I think they should talk some uh, merger down the line. I think that'd be a benefit if they play tournament ball together. Love to see that happen. Um, they're going to be facing off, however, in the battle of West Virginia. Um, second meeting between these two. Spartans beat Venom last year, 13 to 12. Very competitive game. Um, I believe that was the score. If I'm off, let me know in the comments. I think it'll be another good one this time around. The Spartans know Lucas. Lucas knows the Spartans. Um, going to be a nice little matchup to see how it goes. I can't wait for that one. Um, Killer. How beat, many are going to show up for the yeah, Spartans? I don't that's, know. 11, that's just a question. That is a question. I mean, it's an 11 10 kickoff. Um, that's the wrong dates. No, that's, that's, I'm looking the wrong date. Hold on, Marty. I'm doing a double check. Uh, no, that's the right schedule, Marty. Yeah, that's the right schedule. I put week two, though. That's my mistake, if that's what you mean. Um, that's the right, that's all the right schedule according to the one I got here. Yeah. Or, yeah, no, that's right. I keep exam. Oh, you know what? I, you know what? Part of it is wrong. Marty is right. I actually, let's see, where did I screw up at? I see what I did now. The last two games I put in from the wrong one. So ignore the last two. I see where I messed up. The first four are right. I looked at the last two for the next week's game. My mistake on that one. My apologies, fellas. Um, misfits are actually going to be off this week as will prime time. So ignore that graphic. Uh, the last two. Thanks for the point out, Marty. I looked down there and I saw that just now when I was on the phone and saw it up. My bad. Um, so your actual fourth game is still clear, is going to be still uh, Killer Bees and Demons. First ever meeting between those two as franchises. Um, bit of an interesting matchup here. We'll see what each side has. That's a lot of be questions on both sides. Yeah. Um, the actual game at 120 is going to be Pure Chaos and the Killer Bees. Um, man, a year ago, we were debating this. Who would win between Chaos and the Bees? And everybody said, isn't that the same team? And, I mean, you kind of go back. You remember the x Dogs game at one point before Devin got hurt. You had Devin out there, BJ out there. Vontae out there, Houston out there, Orocho on the sidelines. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. This is going to be interesting. Pure Chaos, they're going to be taking on their former B team. And they took a lot of the player, a few of the talent from you guys. And I feel like that's going to make this game even more personal for both ends. Because I know that the Chaos guys want to get a win on the Bees, but I know you guys are hungry against Chaos. Well, the ones, the ones that know, the ones on the Bees that know, it it will mean something. But there's there's a good chunk of people on our team that don't necessarily know that. I can't even really call it a rivalry at this point. I I guess after this week we can. Uh, <laughs> yo, I gotta get a lie. This might be the number nine team versus the number 10 team, but to me, this is game of the week, baby. <laughs> Chaos versus the bees. We're finally getting it, man. I didn't think it was possible. This is like when X Dogs and Top Gun happened. Like, that was one of the mm. – As long as both teams have enough players show up. I think y'all should be fine. Like, Yeah. Yo, if not, like, play a five-man game or something. Like, <laughs> just do anything. Like, make you got to make this happen. We got to have it. Chaos of Bees. That's game of the, the official week. Joey Blaze TBT game of the week. Um, I'm looking forward to that, dude. I'm going to have both the Chaos – Bees and Bees Demons games. Um, final actual game of the day will be Demons and Outlaws. That'll be at 2.25 p.m. Um, 
that was the only team that the Demons did not play in the Green Castle in the Year's Invitational Tournament, actually. They played Immortals and Ruckus, but missed out on Outlaws, who played Ruckus. So it's um, Demons Outlaws? Yeah, Demons Outlaws. That would be the final game of the day. Um, uh, first ever meeting between both sides, obviously. We missed out on it in January, but Outlaws – had a tough draw with uh, Rockets instead, and Demons played Immortals. Um, so Demons finally going to get a taste of that uh, last team they missed out on. So, yeah, that's all I can say on that one. I know a lot of Keith Giles. There's a lot of out-of-division matchups this week. There is. There's five of those babies. Five out of the six games are out-of-division games. And we talked about it earlier, like right now it's three to one in favor of the South. Prime time beat the Demons. I'll give you all that. It was it was all right. You know, Demons weren't ready. It was just their first game. You know, give them time. They'll be fine. It'll be different. Especially if Tivis gets in, then it's definitely different. But Tivis, Tivis not that's not a name we have heard yet. Oh, you'll hear the name Tivis soon. He's coming. He'll tell you in the comments in about two days. But, like, you know, you got that. Nice look. You had that other uh, win, you know. No, you did it. We had our first win when Misfits beat the Outlaws. Kind of an unfair matchup, though. Let's be real here. Little it was first, first game, it was first game of the year. They weren't ready. Yeah, I mean it's hard. To <laughs> it's hard to prepare for misfits. It really is. <laughs> Ross, the division thing is solely a Joey creation and not a KFFL one. I have no stake in KFFL. I'm just doing my own thing like I always do. Notice disclaimer: Team Blunt Talk is not speaking for anybody but Joey Blaze. Disclaimer, in case somebody thinks I give their league a bad image, and that's in general, or team, I'm me. I just say what I say. Anyways, anyhow, anywho, keep it rolling. But you take a look at this schedule, or the second game, or, you know, back at this whole division thing, because I'm rambling and doing that thing I normally do. You know how it is by now, Keith. You see the first hand. Hey, we all do it. We all do it. Try State got the second win when we beat the when they beat the Killer Bees, twenty-eight to six, two and one. And then last week, the South got another victory when. Uh, uh, one second, I'll come back to me. Misfits beat Wolverines. Yeah. I, I had notes and then I deleted the notes and then no, I deleted the notes. So now I'm really kicking myself. Um, five games this week, though. Dogs and Venom, Dogs and Spartans, Bees and Chaos, Bees and Demons, Demons Outlaws. So the question is, Keith, can you guys get three out of five on us? Three out of five? Yeah. Do you think that the X Dogs can beat either Venom or Spartans. Do you think that the Bees can beat the Demons or Chaos, and that the Outlaws can beat the Demons? Well, the Bees are going to beat Chaos, so that's one okay. For us. You got that Bees over Chaos. Bees, bees and Demons. You know, if Clancy's not there, Bees might have a chance. You know, we'll have, we're going to have more people there this week for sure. TJ will be there this week. It'll be a lot different looking team this week than so it was last week. So you guys got week. Cuz coming, okay. So, yeah, we might have uh, – with if if Clancy's not there, we'll, I'll feel a lot better about that game. Uh, and I got to be honest, you know, I can't believe I'm going to say this and kind of starting a predictions here – with this line of questioning, 
I actually think Venom's going to beat the X Dogs. Okay, so you going against you going against your boys up there? You know, I just Venom is on one heck of a roll. Uh, the X Dogs are not on a roll. If Matt were to play quarterback this whole game, which I don't see that happening, then I would probably pick the, then I would go X dogs, but, and that's no shade. You know, that's just, you know, Matt is Matt. And, uh, but yeah, I, I, yeah, I think Venom might pick that one off. Okay. Honestly, when I look at that game, I'm going to go Venom. I just think Lucas Hall and Goldie Jones, that, be, that offense is going to be hard to guard. I don't, I'm don't. i not going to hate on the X-Dogs, D Lyman. Don't get me wrong. The two Jasons can definitely ball out. They're going to bring it every time, Bo Brady and Kinsler. Mm-hmm. What they're lacking is an edge rusher who can come in there and get that. You know, we've seen many guys do that uh, over the years. Donnie Weber did that with Survivors and the Warriors and TVT. Um, we see him on chaos from time to time doing that. Uh, smaller, quick, agile guys. We saw you do that, Keith. Uh, you're one of those guys. Those smaller, quick guys who can come in, find a hole in the O line, whether it's around the edge or in between the guard and the center, and make that flag pull to get quick stops to chase down guys like that. Um, you know, Austin Falk. It's become long. very valuable to teams um, exactly. to a defensive line. Yeah, you know, we saw Austin Falkenroth get back there. For all the flack I give him, he is a very capable rusher who can make a difference. And if you've got guys like that who are able to come in there and take on those sort of players and that move quickly like a Lucas Hall, you're fine. And, you know, I will tell, I will, I, I will just say, like, and that's what the X-Dogs lack. They haven't had that guy since Chile was there. Like, the last time they had a rusher who could do that was Chile, who could move at that sort of speed and pace and keep up with those sort of quarterbacks. And, you know, both Kinsler and Brady can bring it, but when you don't – and even Judd, too. No hate to Judd. I just feel like they're more power linemen, and against someone like Lucas, you need to have that rusher who's either an edge guy – or an outside backer who can come in and do something. We say we're getting a little bit of uh, of uh, different opinions on the chat here. John Ross are saying that X Dogs will win that game, and I would not be surprised if the X Dogs win that game by any means. I want to be either, but we've been saying X Dogs winning at nine a.m. for weeks. Like this home field advantage. Like we talked about X Dogs having a home field advantage. They are on pace to have the most losses they've ever had in Shippensburg this season. They're 0 2 at home right now. And this is a team that, you know, don't get me wrong, their last year in Washington County, they were 2 and 6. And a lot of that was, you know, tough competition. It was stiff every week. A lot of that also was they weren't the same team in the postseason as they were in the regular season, which is what they've done for years. You know, we saw X Dogs be able to sneak up on teams. I just, I don't know. I think Venom will be fine. Venom, those guys are getting used to the travel up here. Like, I think they're adjusting to it a lot better than what a lot of teams have. So I do feel like Venom is going to end up getting the win. I think Lucas gets the dub there. I, I think Matt and them are not too worried about losing, though. Like, they'll figure out something. They'll be that team come playoff time, but I guarantee you a higher seed will sleep on. That's yes. not experienced and will mess up. I saw with the Warriors last year. We Watch the sick. X-Dogs play one of those York teams first round in the playoffs. Uh, they won't be, necessarily yeah. be expecting – what they are can the difference. I mean, you, you're you not going to see Matt at quarterback for an entire game unless it's playoffs. And even then, right. certain playoff games. So get him back there for a whole game. It's a completely different game. I agree with that. I agree 100% with that. Like, 
Like I said, I got no hate for Isaiah. I think Isaiah no. is fine, but Isaiah is not Matt at the end of the yeah. day. And like, yeah, I like what Matt's doing with them with getting the reps, getting the practice, getting the you know, getting the feel for the position. You know, he's doing good by them, and, and that's honorable. But like you said, it's no shade. It's just Matt is a legend. Yeah, that's that's an absolute fact. And come playoff time, like I said, you'll get a different look. You'll get a different kind of dog. I just think going up against Venom this week, I'm going to go with Venom all the way. Um, next game up. We're going to go Spartans, X-Dogs. That's going to be a uh, another North versus South game. Um, go ahead, Joey. Give me your take here first. My take is this. Spartans are going to have to have some numbers first and foremost. Um, secondly, I, got, I hope to see some semblance of a team this week. That first week team, don't get me wrong, they had everything clicked in the right way, and they maintained a good bit of the core guys they had that were there when this team started out. That first week was a good, solid core of team. Yeah. And then, you know, last week we had to forfeit, you know, that was unfortunate. There Did they have a, anyone show up? I, I like a few guys rolled up, but they left as soon as they got the notice. And I don't know. Like I, I'm not going to get involved in that. I hope that it was a one and all thing where it just happens. I hope they don't pull in a lead on us or, pull a uh, top soldiers on us. Just don't do that, please. Um, come out, finish the season. If things work out, cool. Like I said, go, there, there's plenty of other talent available out there from that West Virginia region. Um, hell, go out there and bring back the Top Gun guys. Make a Top Gun reunion. Hit up the Duck guys. I've said the Venom too. Like, there's a lot of talent down there. Both sides have not fully picked out that's still sitting at home. And I don't think either side has even shown close to 25 yet. And there's a lot of spots to fill. Um, my personal pick on this one, it's all going to depend on how much they got and how well they all play together. I think the X Dogs be a little bit more prepared for this one. I ain't going to get some guys down here, but I got to go with the X Dogs in this game. I think they get the win, and because of the fact that it's a close game, and I know we talked about it, it hasn't helped them all season, but I think they'll be a little bit more prepared. But at the same time, I don't know, man. Spartans are just a question mark to me right now. You would think with that and Venom being a rivalry game, right after that they'd get a large crowd. But who knows? Like, who really knows? I'm, su I, I'm surprised they've been able like, – this is a team that everybody has had on the deathbed for a bit. And it's hard to tell. I'd hate to see it because of the fact that this is a team that has been growing a lot. This is a core that needs to sit together. They just went undefeated in the regular season last year. And not even just that. Like, this was a team that showed in Ocean City they could hang with circuit teams. Yes. Like, this, they showed they could travel. And, you know, it, it's surprisingly enough, they have four circuit wins. They have the second most circuit wins out of any of these teams listed right now this year behind Misfits. And that should tell you this is a franchise that should not be in this kind of predicament. But I feel like given what's happening right now, I think X-Dogs take that second game. And I don't want to say that because, you know, I'm all about our guys down here. But at the end of the day, I think the dogs take it. At the end of the day, we got to keep it as unbiased as possible. You know, you know I mean, there always is some. Despite my feelings, I always will never be biased. Yeah. Now, I, I also feel the X-Dogs with proper personnel on both sides. I think the X-Dogs can pick this one up as well. Going from the escape artist from Lucas – to Keenan, I think will benefit the X Dogs defense. I think it does too, because all of a sudden those rushers do not. They can make a difference them. more exactly. so than, uh, yeah. So I, th I think the X Dogs can pick that one up also. Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, X Dogs there too. They will not go 0 and 4. 
they will not go in for that's my that's my last bit on the x dogs i can't even fathom them being going for oh i that would be of course i couldn't fathom the bees losing to the outlaws so shit happens life is strange Third game then, of the day, Spartans and Venom. That's the, that's a rivalry game in the sense of Battle of West Virginia. Um, that's the game of the week for that. And it's a co-game of the week with Bees Chaos. Um, I think if everybody plays to their full potential, you should see a classic here. The only interdivisional game this week, um, it'll be a division game. So that'll be pretty big to see. Um, Spartans. And Venom, I'm going to have to go with – I think Venom's going to have a little bit more in the tank. I think they come out of this day 4-0. They get the win on Spartans. Um, but like I said, it all depends on what the Spartans come out with. This is a team that comes out with numbers. They're going to be fine. But if they come out light and try to play two games with the X-Dogs, who could be playing Matt Eisenberg, or even Venom, who has Lucas Hall, they're going to be in for a rough haul. You know, they're going to be in for a tough time. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm going to go with Venom for the moment, however. Yeah, I, I, I definitely see a timeline where the Spartans can win this. But There it is, and it requires everybody to be there. They ban if they have that same solid core that was there week one, I could see them winning this. Yeah. Uh, God's telling me to go with Spartans, but. My senses are telling me to go with Venom. So I'm going to go okay. with Venom. Venom? I think, and I think that's more just numbers concern. Uh, I think Venom's going to be coming ready to play. And, uh, you know, these are two big names for them to chalk down on this kind of revenge tour of, revenge tour of sorts. You know, they fought in every single game last year. You know, score out the window. They fought in every single game. And uh, so uh, Lucas probably has that little chip on his shoulder for the, for these games this year. So, yeah, I'll go Venom 4-0. Oh, Something I, I did not think of seeing at the start yeah. of the year. Crazy. Crazy. Next and, game up, we got uh, Killer Bees and Demons. I know who you got. I mean, th- so this is this is the question mark game right here. Yeah. You know, uh, I feel like I feel like out of any of the games on the schedule this week, this is the most uninformed game of the week. Uninformed. Yeah, we just don't know what all we don't know who's gonna we, we don't know who's gonna be there. We don't know. Hmm. Uh, who everyone has, you know, we haven't seen either of these teams at their full potential yet. I can believe that, especially when it comes to just where both of these teams have been all season. Demons have been light, bees are rebuilding. I don't believe we've seen the full picture yet, but I gotta go with the demons, man. I just I don't see it with the bees here, like. TJ is fine and all, but I think these Demons guys will be locked in on him. I think they'll shut him down. I'm going to go Demons by a touchdown or two. Uh, yeah, I uh, – yeah, I will – I don't know, man. I guess I'll probably – I'll go Demons. They ha- definitely have the – more experienced players. So I'll go with demons. Chaos versus bees. That one's going to be bees. Chaos. Oh, man. What? (sighs) All right, Joey, be that way. Telling you, bro. The toilet tornado is going to get flushed. Killer bees are about to see what happens when they face off against the A team. <laughs> oh, you son of a. <laughs> I got two words for you. 
Okay. Suck it. Oh, okay. I don't actually see you on the other side. No. Oh. And, and then that's that's a, that's, there you go. You all should merge with DX. That's an idea. Hit up Josh Floyd and merge with DX. N no idea. Yeah, yeah. No, they played in Trump City Classic, a roadshow, and Kyle Jason started the garden center for them against AFN, Blackhawks, and Nomads. That must have been you, quite a while happen. ago. Killer Bees, sign DX. Bring in Josh Floyd and the rest of those other guys. Whoever those other guys were. <laughs> They had like 10. It was sad. All right. Ross is talking a little sensical here. Bees over chaos. Man, Ross, you ain't talking no sense. He's on, he's sitting there sipping on some KG right now. And he's probably like, yep, bees. And I'm like, you just being a hater, Ross. It's okay. Chaos is going to go in there and beat the killer bees like the bees beat the warriors in the men tournament with that interception. Ross knows what I'm talking about. Uh, I know what you're talking about. If I pick six. Mm, kill her every time. <laughs> and then Out the last game was Outlaws and Outlaws and Demons. Outlaws and Demons. Yep. It says not 148 Outlaws versus Long Island Demons versus KFFL Outlaws. Not to be confused with the YAFFL Outlaws versus the Maryland Demons. I just call them Maryland Demons because I guess they're from Maryland. Maybe they're the Fred Demons. Maybe they're the Hagerstown Demons. Maybe, maybe they're the Southern Demons. Maybe they're the Mason Dixon Demons. Nah, we just represent here down in the DMV. We're not Pennsylvania. Fair enough. I'm going to go with uh, demons in this one. Yeah, same demons. Yeah, we don't have to even debate it. Yeah. Ah, man, oh, man, oh, man. What a show tonight, Mr. Blaze. It has been quite a show tonight, Mr. Keith Giles. So, do a recap. You got us, you got the South Division winning this weekend, do you? Um, yeah, overall, I think so. It's okay. Just what we do. Oh, my goodness. Mr. Blaze, enjoy this little divisional thing while you can. It will come back. The North will come back and uh, reclaim the crown. It's okay. We've been running things for years. All right, Mr. Blaze. It's been a good show. I think that's going to be about it for tonight. I think so, too. Well, we got 25 overall games between divisions. I think it's going to be a fun little matchup. It's going to be a good matchup. Good weekend for some football. Hopefully the rain stays away. I think I'll call games with you a little bit too. Heard that, yeah. Do uh, double double cast. I like it. All righty, Mister Blaze. It was a pleasure. It was real. It was fun. You could say it was real fun. Everyone, thank you for tuning in. I am Keith Giles, and I'm Joey Blaze. Catch you this weekend, guys. Go to Try Hard Sports. Give us a like. Give us a follow, see and uh, we'll see you soon.